and it's an impossible argument to really handle verbally. Or th that's how I feel. So, um, Alice, first of all, this is way better for th me. This is a you're glimpse. Just, you're just talking about one thing now, so this is easier for me to manage. So now we <laughs> we still get to we still get to just the core issue, which is why why is it important to you to convince these people? Um, well, I feel like it's a part of my job, but also right. I want, well, my job's to analyze and approach. Fine, so your your job is to analyze, so hold on a second. So, analysis, you're a coach? Uh, well, I have, co I, I mean, I still do freelance coaching for various, like, uh, LCS and LEC players. So, analysis is very different from convincing people. Like, why do you feel like you have to convince people? Okay, so if you were a scientist, um, and you discovered certain things, but the scientific board says that you're wrong, that can actually really harm your career. Potentially. It can call into question your credibility. Sure. And then it becomes very frustrating if you can quantify or replicate the things that you're talking about. Like, like a test, right? Like, you can, you, I mean, that's how it works in science. So that you can go and recreate if if you talk about freezing and how it creates yeah. an economic advantage barring certain circumstances like no neutral objectives on the map um how does that affect your career if lots of people dissent against it some that are even prolific within the community that can be really bad because then if i get labeled as so some people uh genuinely think i'm a contrarian i, I say things just to disagree dissent sure. against the majority opinion etc that is very and then, damning and then, and then you tell them no i'm not then i tell them no you're a fucking flat earther like holy <laughs> shit <laughs> so like it gets it, it is you're no that... i'm not you're a fucking flat earther <laughs> yes you're a so, contrarian i I get really, I get really, uh, I, I think maybe you're familiar with the term triggered. Yeah. And I will sit here in my house with some of the people I live with. Um, one of them is actually one of the, I, he might be the highest ranked uh, Western Terran StarCraft 1 player still. Um, in, in StarCraft 1, uh, Nyokin, who's WCG USA finalist a couple of times, whatever, in StarCraft 1. Anyway, um, so anyways, I talk with him. Um, I talk with Max, a uh, person that I live with, and we will just sit there for two to three hours and literally play devil's advocate, trying to figure out ways to strangle these fucking conversations. And it's so insufferable. Yeah, man. So, so look, what I want to point out to you is that convincing someone, right? Like, so convincing the scientific board. So you've made it clear. Sorry, I keep on having false starts with sentences. That's okay. My words can't catch up to what my mind is kind of thinking about. So let me just think for a second. So, Ellis, I think a big problem that you run into is that your logic is good. So when we think about, you know, when you think about sort of the gold rush of esports right now, and you think about missed opportunities and uncertainty about the future, your logic yes. is good, right? So if, if now for the first time you can co-stream league events, that's not an opportunity you want to miss out on because, like, once the field gets saturated and people, like, go to particular streamers, like, it's hard to start streaming later. There, yes. the, the problem is that your logic is good. And when it comes to the, the potential impact of, you know, being viewed as a contrarian or disrespected by other people in the community, how that affects your standing and how that affects your professional situation... That also, the logic is good. I'm not disagreeing with any of your logic. What I'm curious about is your personal investment, right? So if I'm a scientist and I... So, I mean, I, I do this, right? So I, I go to, let's say, like, I have a, a perspective collaboration with, like, my team for helping me and stuff. So I, I kind of go to some people. We've also had calls with, you know, other institutions or organizations. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, Actually, I had a great call with Riot a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we, you know, if I go to someone and I say like, hey, I think this is important. And they say, no, we disagree. We don't think it's important. Um, that can be strategically bad, but like, I don't have to get bent out of shape. 
What I'm really curious about is why you get so personally bent out of shape. Like, what what about this is triggering or tilting? Like, because people can be idiots, but what's your personal investment? Like, flat, like, so mm -hmm. flat earthers, you know, are idiotic. I think, but growing up, uh, I, I was called a liar a lot because there were phases of my life where I did have to lie a lot. Um, because there, there would be instances where, with my family, um, they would ask me a question, and if I knew that if I responded truthfully or honestly, um, it would result in an outburst. Or something, something physically uncomfortable would occur. Okay. And so, as a means to diffuse the situation, I would lie instantly, and I would develop ways to lie instantly. Um, and... <clears throat> that stuck with me through uh, preteen as well as teenage life. Um, even, so even when I stopped lying, once I felt more um, safe and secure with my own identity, as well as just knowing how certain situations were going to go, etc. Um, I think there's something about... So this actually goes back to you know, living in a glass house, recording everything, etc. I think that... Um, if I present something and someone just says no, it's wrong, I feel like that is very akin to being called a liar. And when it's about a job that I'm so invested into emotionally and physically, uh, with the amount of time that I sink into it, it disturbs me on a, on a really pretty deep emotional level. That I, I think other people with my same job titles wouldn't actually understand because this is all that I do. Um... And it's not that what, I can't what be What is wrong, disturbing but... you on an emotional level? What gets disturbed? Um, it blows my mind at how, um, how, I don't know how to describe this. Uh, I don't think. I don't know how to answer it. There, okay. There's like a lot of different images in my head and I, I don't know how to translate them into words. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I think, so let me, Alice, I think we're getting somewhere. And I think uh -huh. the, the basic issue here is that you're not fighting the individual battle from today. You're fighting the host, every conversation that you have with people, every disagreement that you have with people about strategy, like you said, it makes you feel like a liar right yes. and so what it's actually evoking within you is like all of that stuff so so it, i think the reason you're so invested personally in these conversations which which frankly sounds kind of idiotic right so there's a there's a saying in sanskrit that's bhes agar bhagvat or my language <laughs> and bhes agar bhagvat means reading the bible to a buffalo okay. and it's like it's like it, you're just gonna get frustration like some situations are the equivalent of trying to read the Bible to a buffalo. And it's just dumb. Like, it's, like if you try to do it, you can try to read as beautifully and as convincingly as you want, but at the end of the day, you're just talking to a buffalo. So they're just not going to understand. And and what I, what I hear you doing is, like, trying really, really hard to convince people. And, and to me, it sounds, you know, your, your, your arguments have logic, but I don't think that your need to convince them even though standing within the community and stuff is like all important there's clearly something else that's driving you because like flat eartherness and standing in the community are like completely separate issues the flat eartherness about it, the, the the ridiculousness of it the perception of being a liar the sort of living your life in a glass house all of these things have nothing to do with your standing in the community their adaptations or maladaptations, and we can talk about that, to like helping you manage like whatever this thing is on the inside. And I think what happens with you is that when you get into an argument with someone, you're trying to convince everyone in your past in that moment, and this is kind of weird and messed up, but unfortunately it's just how our mind works, just the rules of the game. You're trying to convince everyone who thought you were a liar. Right? Like everyone who judged you and everyone who said this kid is wrong, this kid is crazy, this kid is stupid. 
and you, you're trying to fight like all of those battles in that moment because that's the only way that you can get so much emotional energy into an individual conflict because it can't you just can't be that bent out of shape arguing with some noob on a discussion forum about whether you're strapped like it just doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah i know uh right and like that's the condition of the internet so if we look at like toxicity and anger and tilting on the internet like do you really think every guy who gets super super bent out of shape is like deeply and personally invested in every single reddit thread that they post in no it's like misdirected anger and toxicity and misjudgment like in the rest of their world and, and i see this a lot like the, the the more ashamed you are of yourself in the real world the more important it is for you to maintain a respectable online persona because all of their shame like they use like you know they they teach noobs on the internet like you smurf in lol so that you can feel good about yourself and like generally speaking the people who smurf you know like suck in life or are not confident in themselves in some way right yeah, and absolutely. that's that's yeah. my personal toxicity towards Smurfs because I have an issue with it. So I say they suck at life, right? But no. Anyway, yeah, I, I, yeah. So but, no, that's my point. You brought that up. My yeah. point is that, like, like you know, you're not just talking to a person. There's like a whole pile of stuff, and this goes back to like bursting at the seams. So, like, let me just tell you, like, just listen to this, okay? So. Stressing out, stress, insomnia, fear about the future, anxiety, it's my whole life, psychosomatic stuff, physical stuff, anger, you know, flat earthers, you just can't understand it, your whole life is caught up in this, like esports, like respect, financial security, like this, all this, this, so I, I get imposter syndrome a lot sometimes yeah. when, I, when I have these arguments in these conversations. And then, so in the first meeting that we had, you, you asked uh, if I end up blaming myself. So at the end of this, I blame myself because I think that there's a better way to attack the arguments and attack the, the problems, yeah. right? So, but then I, I wonder if I'm fucking crazy or something. And, you know, like, so it's, it's a loop. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ellis, here's my point. Like, when someone says there are 50 million things wrong, I just don't think that there are 50 million things wrong. So one of my... Um, the supervisors when I was in med school, or like one of the psychiatrists I was working with, one of the people who inspired me to go to psychiatry, once told me that if any patient has three diagnoses, they're all wrong. So sometimes, like, we get these patients that have, like, they had this freaking alphabet of diagnoses. MDD, GAD, PTSD, ADD. You know, like, it's like just a bunch of letters. And it's like, that's yeah. not, like, I don't think that this person has four discrete processes that are going on in their, like, mind. I don't think they have, like, four different circuits that are busted. Like, there's one, like, like there's common stuff. There's something that is manifesting as depression, manifesting as anxiety, making it difficult for them to co concentrate. And oftentimes, it's trauma. Like, trauma is, like, where all this crap starts, and you've had your fair share. And so I think that when you have all of these, like, like issues around, you know, stressing out insomnia, like, I don't think that's the problem. I think the basic problem is that you've got some stuff from the past which, like, acts on the present. And you don't deal with the stuff from the past. So another way to kind of say that is you said the, the first week went well. Like, earlier, like, at the very beginning of this conversation, you said, yes. I managed week one well, week two is when the problems started. And I wanted to stop you right there, and I was like, no, my friend, the mistake was in week one. Because week one is when you let that shit... The problem is that the only time you notice that there's trash to be emptied is when your trash can is overflowing. That's what your life looks like, yeah. in a nutshell. Like, the problem is that you're like, oh, there's, like, trash on the floor. Oh, maybe I, like, oh, like, there's, the, my trash can is overflowing, so let me just take all of the stuff on the top that's spilling out and throw that away. And we're going to leave all the other trash in the trash can. We're just going to take all the stuff that's spilling over the top and we're going to deal with that. But your problem is in that first week. You're kind of saying, like, okay, I'm going to do this, for, I'm going to crucify myself for one 10 hour work weeks because there are really good opportunities here and then I'll take a break later and then I'm going to go back to cruising find myself. Your whole system of managing whatever it is that you're managing I think is not working well. 
And that's why it's like you have stuff that's like seeping out. It's like getting like tilting it at noobs who don't understand. Like I don't I don't I don't get and I mean I do get, but I'm going to just say like so you know if you really understand the validity of your argument and someone is too fucking dumb to get it, like that makes me feel like once you sort of get that, you don't try to convince them anymore because you realize it's a lost cause. But you get tilted. And then, like, your body also starts giving out. You get, like, allergen and asthma problems and stuff like that. And and so it's it's just, like, literally, like, you're, you're, you're building up... I don't know. I wish there was, like, some word for, you know, like... De like not debuff it's like it, you're just building up like stress it's like you have a stress have you played darkest dungeon this is what it is. This is no you guys played okay so like in darkest dungeon it's a fantastic game by the way i, I mean if you're like okay. into competitive games and stuff like that, it's a single player game so in darkest dungeon it's it's like cool so you have this party right and like the idea behind this is like your party is gonna get screwed so you, like your characters die there's permadeath they like get like they get like P they literally get PTSD and they like can't fight properly and stuff like that. It's like an amazing okay. epic game. And so what happens? So Darkest Dungeon introduced a really cool concept in gaming, which I don't see very much, which is we always have like HP bars and MP bars. We have like resources that we um, use up and diminish over time, and then when we get empty, we die. Right? Like when you run out of HP is when you die. And HP yeah. starts full, and you kind of run out of HP. So Darkest Dungeon actually did the opposite, too, where they added this, this stat called Stress. And as your stress increases, your character, like, gets screwed. So, like, you're in this dungeon where, like, people are getting, like, every time you get a critical, every time your character gets critically hit, everyone in yeah. your party gets, like, like, stress. So, like, stress okay. is, like, 0 out of 200, so they got, like, 9 points of stress. And then once you win, hit 100, they like they have to make like some kind of check. And if they like hit 100 and they don't make that check properly, they get like some kind of permanent debuff. They get like a 30% miss chance, or like they lose like you know like their disease res resistance goes down. Sometimes they start to panic and they like won't act. Like instead of like attacking, they'll just sit there and shit their pants. And and like so, I think it's a cool game. I love the game. But in your case, I think what's happening is you're building up stress. Like, there's some meter within you that is filling up. And it's like your trash can is filling up, filling up, filling up. And the only time you notice it is when it overflows. And then what you try to manage is the overflow. It's like, I'm exhausted, haven't slept, let me go get a banana pack. That's like taking the five bits of trash from the top of your trash can and, like, taking them out and throwing them away and leaving your trash can left over. And the trash can is filled up in week one. Like, you put your body... Like, the, the other problem is that you're so resilient and your willpower is so strong that you can tolerate... Like, it's like your, you know... Your constitution can tolerate rotting food in your trash can. Whereas, like, other people can't tolerate that, so they clean out their trash. In a bizarre way, your capacity, your constitution, and your resilience allow you to propagate unhealthy situations to the breaking point. And there's something really bizarre that I see in some people, which is that some people suffer, like, consequences, you know, when they're at 70%, 50%, 30%. And some people don't bend. Some people only break. And I think you fall into this category. Where, like, you, you can function at a very high level until your breaking point, and then you just snap. Yes. And the solution... Yeah, no, that, that happens. The snaps happen. Absolutely, man. They, no, they, they happen almost, um, if I could, like, pull in some of my roommates or, or something to, like, answer, I mean, no, I'm not going to, I'm just saying, the cycles tend to be about nine weeks, and then there's a very big snap, and then everything goes away, and it's like it's back to zero. Yep. Um, the snaps are really scary, um, not, like... Yeah, I don't know how to describe them. Um, so, <coughs> yeah. So th this is important for people who are watching too. So I want you guys to understand, like, your pattern is not uncommon. And in fact, w when it comes to gamers, I think they're remarkably resilient. 
So I think that gamers are very good at dealing with just gigantic piles of like negative emotion and other stuff, right? That's why we all procrastinate and like don't deal with our problems and stuff like that. And then like we have this, you know, it's like you've got this basement that's just full of crap. And in your case, I, I, I just don't think that your life is going to continue to be sustainable. And the challenge... No, I don't... I don't. The yeah. challenge is that none of your logic is wrong, right? Like, so from a career standpoint, it may be a good idea to stream LCS. It may be a good idea to work 110 hours a week. But I, I think that working 110 hours a week and at the same time spending half of your energy tilting at noobs, like, you just don't have the energy to tilt at noobs. Yeah, like, not if no, you're working you're right, 110 right. hours a week. I, I think um, this most recent week, um, Saturday, uh, my co-caster, his name is Brendan Valdez, um, I remember before set two uh, started, I was actually welling up and I sort of like laughed to him and I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to have a breakdown. And he looked at me like, what's wrong? And I said, I don't fucking know. And I started panicking um, because usually when I'm in uh, a work mode, I won't have a breakdown um, or I won't have like a snap, but Five minutes before the cast went live, I was welling up, uh, my legs were shaking, and I'm like, holy shit, I'm just gonna start crying. And I fucking was just feeling so many emotions. Managed to get it together, cast the second series, went home, and fucking yeah, just went right to sleep. But that was a very unsettling thing. But sometimes there's just moments where all I want to do is cry and scream. Um, and I just want everything to stop. So, I and completely what, agree with you. What do you do then, LS, when you want to cry and, and then I scream? Reset. So you do cry <laughs> and scream? Oh yeah, sometimes. And I ask, uh, I ask roommates to like leave the house and stuff, and it's like literally something out of like a fucking drama, or like, you know, something you watch on Netflix. I literally just have an emotional breakdown, and I'm like, okay, I'm reset. As fucking crazy as that sounds, I'm like, let's do it again. Yeah, man. <gasps> oh fuck me! Holy shit. Yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, so, so now the, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about adaptive and maladaptive. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we. I'm glad you're able to share all this stuff. Hopefully, you know, the noobs won't attack you for your freezing strategy because of what you're saying here today. <laughs> And and so let's just so I want I want people to understand this too. So I so your body, your mind, and your brain does the best that it can 